So today I want to talk about integrating when you have the natural logarithm. Before I do, since we're going to be talking a lot about logarithms and their properties as we continue to talk about um, integrating with the logarithmic uh, function, I just want to real quick go to, through that basic rundown of the review of logarithmic properties. We actually already reviewed this once this year when we talked about um, in a, or excuse me differentiating the ln of x or the natural logarithm. So remember we talked about how if we have um, ln of 1, we get 0. Um, mainly we also talked about how if I have ln of a plus b, it's the same thing as saying ln of a plus ln of b. If I have um, an exponent here, I can bring that out into the front of my natural logarithm, giving me n ln of a, or n, n natural logarithm of a. And if I have division here, I can break it into two natural logarithms, ln of a, subtract ln of b. And then finally, if I have the natural logarithm of e, I just get one, mainly because these are inverse functions of one another. Um, also here is the graph of ln of x. So if I look here, if I go through some of the different properties of my graph, I notice that my domain, meaning my x values, I have this vertical asymptote here. So it looks like my function is getting really, really close to x equals 0, but it's never actually touching it. So my domain does go from 0 up to infinity. Notice that I am using that um, open interval notation with the zero because it is not actually going to touch x equals zero. In terms of concavity, notice that it is concave down across the entire interval. Down, it's kind of hard to read. Um, and then if I look at the limit as x approaches, let me draw in my arrows here, limit as of the natural logarithm of x as x approaches 0. Remember that this plus sign up here does mean to the from the right. So as I come in from the right, notice that my limit is approaching negative infinity. I'm getting smaller and smaller. And my range being my y values, well, notice that it does extend down all the way down. So it does have y values all the way down to negative infinity. And if this were to continue going on, it would continue to go higher and higher, meaning that my uh, y values do also go all the way up to positive infinity. Oops. Um... And then also just one other thing to point out here that the function is continuous, it is increasing, and it is one-to-one, -one, some of those other terminologies that we've talked about this year. Um, moving on to looking at slide. So as I had said in the beginning, we are going to be talking about natural logarithmic functions and its integration. So one thing I want to point out is we looked at this back when we were still talking about derivatives. The derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. Therefore, when we are looking at integrating, if I'm integrating 1 over x, so in other words, I'm asking myself, what was the function before it was differentiated? Well, I should get ln of absolute value of x. The reason I need these absolute value bars here is because at, like as that graph showed that we just looked at momentarily um, just a moment ago that um, my ln of x only can be taken of x values greater than zero. So we looked at how the domain went from um, zero up to infinity, so I cannot take the natural log of negative numbers. So I need to have those absolute value bars in place, plus c. Um, another way of looking at it is if we do have some kind of composite function and we do need to um, use u substitution to help us, um, help us in our integrating, we can also look at it as if we have um, choose a function for u and u prime du, then we'll also say ln of absolute value of u plus c. So if we look at this first example, I remember that if I have a constant, like I do here of the 2, I can pull that out front. So pulling my constant out front, I get 2 times the integral of 1 over x dx. Well, according to what we just looked at right here, if I am taking the integral of 1 over x, which I am doing right here, it does just become the function ln of absolute value of x. My 2 needs to stay out front, and the integral of 1 over x dx becomes ln, excuse me, 2 ln absolute value of x plus c, since it is um, an indefinite integral as opposed to a definite integral. If I look at my next... Okay. 
I have the integral of 1 over 4x minus 1 dx. So I try to integrate this, and I notice that this 4x minus 1 is causing problems for me. Um, I cannot simply bring it to the top because if I do, I'm still going to have that 4x minus 1 in stuck inside of some parentheses um, being raised to the negative 1 power. So doing that will not help me. Um, we really can only bring it to the top if we have a monomial on the bottom. So um, I'm going to go ahead and try to use some u substitution and see if that doesn't help me out. I'm going to try to let u equal 4x minus 1, which means the derivative of u with respect to x is 4, and thus du equals 4 dx. Well, when I look at my function, I notice I only have 1 dx. I need to have a 4 dx. If you recall from what we studied before, I can put a 4 in here as long as I put a 1 fourth on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and say that this is equivalent to 1 fourth. times the integral of 4 over 4x minus 1 dx. Now I'm able to say, hey, I can put u in right here because I have defined u as 4x minus 1, and I can put du in, the, in for this 4 dx, thus giving me 1 fourth times the integral of 1 over u du. Um, I can't integrate if I have u on the bottom, but because it is now a monomial on the bottom, I can bring it to the top. And now I'm ready to integrate. Um, and actually, I really didn't even need to bring it down to the, up to the top because I should have noticed right here that 1 over u should integrate um, to just be ln absolute value of u. So this was um, an unnecessary step. So going from here to here, I get 1 fourth ln absolute value of u plus c. I need to plug my u back in, and my final answer is 1 fourth ln absolute value of 4x minus 1 plus c. If we look at the next two examples, this one is going to be very similar to the last one in regard to the fact that if I were to try to integrate this as is, I have this um, rational function here with both a numerator and the denominator. I cannot bring the denominator up to the top because again it is not a monomial. Um, I do not remember have any kind of quotient rule that goes with integrating, so instead I need to try to manipulate my given function to see if I can't turn it into something that I can use my basic integration rules for. So I'm going to go ahead and let u equal x cubed plus x. The reason I'm going to try having it equal this as opposed to this is because I'm anticipating that uh, 3x would differentiate to be 3x squared and x would differentiate to be 1. So it looks like if I let this be my u, I am going to get what I need in terms of substituting du in. Um, if I were to let my u be 3x squared plus 1, um, I would anticipate that differentiating that would give me 6x, um, which does not show up anywhere here. So I'm going to go ahead and try to let u equal x cubed plus x. And then du dx will equal 3x squared plus 1. And du would equal 3x squared plus 1 dx, which, lucky for me, that is what I have right here. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute du in place for that 3x squared plus 1. And I'm going to substitute u in place for that x cubed plus x. Doing so then gives me the integral of 1 over u du. Now in the last example I tried rewriting this as u to the negative 1, but I'm not going to do that on this one because I am going to notice that 1 over u, it integrates just to be ln absolute value of u. Of u. So this then gives me natural logarithm absolute value of u plus c. I substitute x cubed plus x back in for u, and I have my final answer for my indefinite integral. Okay, and then looking at the last example, here would be a good time for you to go ahead and pause the video and try this example on your own to make sure you are understanding this concept and are able to get to the correct answer on your own.
All right, now that you've gone ahead and done that, um, let's see how you did. I would first say, all right, I cannot bring this binomial up to the top. It will not do anything for me, so trying u substitution and letting u equal 3x plus 2, I do get that du dx is 3, and du is simply 3 dx. Well, I have the dx that I need. I don't have the 3. So if you remember from previous concepts we've talked about, I can get that 3 in there as long as I put a 1 3rd out front also. So I'm going to first rewrite my integral as 1 3rd times the integral of 3 over 3x plus 2 dx, thus allowing me to now go ahead and substitute du in for the 3 dx and u in for the 3x plus 2 thus giving me one-third times the integral of one over u du. Now again, I do not need to change that u to the negative one because I now know that the integral of one over u is just ln of u, giving me one-third ln absolute value of u plus c, having a final answer of one-third times the natural logarithm of the absolute value of 3x plus 2 plus my constant since it was an indefinite integral.